Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome to another instalment of Bob Goes Fishing. Today we're on the River Grey Twos, um, starting off on a mill stream and then after a couple of hours or so moving over to the main river. So here we are at the mill stream. I'm just setting up and a um, very, very breezy day. Um, not, not too cold, but certainly the wind was very fresh. The water level was just about ideal, not too high and not too low. I've been doing a fair bit of reading on fishing and chuck fishing in particular. And today I decided to try some feeder fishing. Normally I just use a link ledger. In fact, that cast you just saw was with a link. I, I moved over to the feeder um, a little bit later. Because I was using a feeder, I stepped up the tackle a bit today. Um, I had my hardy specimen Avon with a, an eight pound line uh, direct to the hook. As it turned out, that might have been overcooking it a bit because I was getting lots of taps on the rod top, but I was, was not hitting them. Um, I wasn't sure whether they were small chub or other fish or just bigger chub, being a little bit careful. When I finally made contact, as you can see here, it was very, very short-lived. Um, the fish was only on for probably 10 seconds or so, and it felt like a good fish. To say I was disappointed is an understatement. Thinking that the lost fish would probably spook the rest, I decided to move swims for a while. I went to the head of the mill stream where I fished a few times before, ankle chub, um, just to give the other swim a bit of a rest. The water was a bit more turbulent than I would have liked, um, even though I was trying to keep near the slacker side of the stream. But I did get a bite and um, the chub was on. Quite a small chub in fact, but quite amazingly um, it, it made its way into the dying rushes just, just to my left there. And it did the usual transfer of the hook routine, so I ended up hooked into the rushes and the little chub was on its way. After that disturbance, I thought I might as well just make my way back to the first swim again. Once again, I was getting knocks on the rod top and I was missing bites and I, I'd come to the conclusion at this point that the, the tip of this rod was just not sensitive enough. But I persevered and eventually I got a bite that I could hit and the, the fish stayed on. However, unfortunately, it wasn't anywhere as big as the one I lost, and um, in fact, it wasn't a very big chub at all. But, but um, after all the problems of missed bites and losing the other small chub at the other swim, it was nice actually to get one on the bank. After this, I found that the bites dropped off. Um, there were no more taps on the rod top. Um, I, I guess landing the fish, uh, as is often the case, had spooked spooked the other fish in, in the swim. So I decided probably it was a good time to consider moving over to the main river where a couple of weeks ago I had spotted a swim that looked very chubby. So after unhooking this little fella I got my gear together and set off for the main river which was a bit of a walk to get to the spot that I actually wanted to fish. So here we are at the main river. In fact I'm on an island and on this side of the island it's the main flow which is downstream from a weirpool. The other side of the island is also downstream from a weirpool but the flow over that weir is much much less and the flow in the stream is, is certainly a great deal less. You can see from the inset picture that there is a slack on, on the near bank just downstream from me. There is a tree that projects out and the main flow is obviously to the far side and I was aiming to fish on the edge of that main flow 
um, between between it and the the eddy or the slack that's just in front of me. As on the mill stream, I started fishing with just a simple link, link ledger, but after a couple of casts, I, I put an open feed on, packed with liquidised bread. It might have been just a coincidence, but whereas I didn't get a bite on the link ledger, which might have been because it wasn't gripping the bottom um, well enough and it was just too um, mobile, but, but after I put the um, open feeder on, um, and you can see here I'm, I'm just um, about to start packing it with the liquidised bread. But, but after I put it on, um, quite amazingly, um, first cast with it, I, I got a bite. Once again, I think the, the stiffness of the rod top um, wasn't helping me. Um, I certainly wasn't getting the sort of bites that that you normally get from chub, they were much more tentative. Um, at the moment you can just see I've just put a big lump of cheese paste on the hook there, that, that's what I'm using today. Um, cheese paste seems to work quite well in, in the winter. For my next outing I've decided I'm going to use my Corum multi-feeder rod which has got a very, very fine tip on it and it also has a coloured section, a, a light green coloured section at the end of the tip, which makes actually looking for bite indication a lot easier. The problem with the rod that I'm using at the moment is that it's olive green and if, it, if, if you're looking at it and the surface of the water is, is, has a reflection of a tree or something making it darker, it's actually very difficult to see small movements on the rod top. But fortunately a chub obliged and gave it a reasonable pull which enabled me to respond and um, it was a bit bigger than the chub I got in the mill stream but at the same time not a particularly large fish. So I now feel reasonably confident that um, using the open feeder and the liquidised bread is a worthwhile thing to do. Perhaps in the summer when the, the water is not as heavy and it's clearer, the simple shot link ledger is, is a better option. But, but in these um, heavier waters and more coloured water, um, the, f the feeder I think does give you a bit more of an edge. After unhooking this fish, which as I say isn't, isn't a big fish, but, but um, it's a little bit better than the one I got before, I, um, I walked it up the bank a little bit upstream to put it back so I didn't disturb the swim. And in fact when I came back and I made another cast, um, I, I got another bite straight away, which, which did surprise me. But unfortunately on that occasion I, um, I didn't connect. After that, however, um, the, bites, the bites tailed off. As I walk up to put this fish back uh, a little way upstream, um, you will just about get sight of the, uh, the weir, the upstream weir, which um, obviously um, gives the water this, this fairly frothy appearance. You can, of course, also hear the water rushing over the weir. As I mentioned a little while ago, I, I did get a bite when I got back, but I missed it, or I didn't connect, and after that the bites dropped off. So. I decided to move to the point of the island just to try one more spot before I packed up for the day. I wasn't terribly confident that this, this swim would um, yield anything. Um, there was a fairly strong flow 
almost right across the river at this point. But there was um, some slack just down the, the reed bank on my left there. But but it was it was still quite turbulent and I was far from confident that that I would I would get a chub from that spot. But I, I thought I'd give it a try just before I packed up for the day. Perhaps I wasn't being positive enough, but um, my my negative thoughts about the possibilities of this spot um, proved to be proved to be founded because I, I didn't get a touch and I didn't fish here for long to be honest I I just gave it about 20 minutes or so um, I was already later than I had, had planned for for packing up but but it was a nice way to end the day just sitting there peacefully watching the water flow by and with um, half a hope that that rod top might swing round which it didn't So I leave you with this view of the water, which um, for us anglers is always uh, something worth looking at. And I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you will keep an eye open for the next one. Until then, it's um, thank you for watching and bye for now.